previously on The Way We Did It. We took our lance to Colorado Springs in search of gold, the dream stream, and wild donkeys. We are now heading to Laramie, Wyoming to drive the Snowy Range Scenic Byway in the Medicine Bow National Forest. A well-known fact about Dave, he is obsessed with the vast, wide-open landscape of Wyoming and is constantly looking for reasons to visit. His latest discovery is a scenic byway that traverses the Snowy Range Mountains. It travels through a sub-range of the Rocky Mountains, passing glacier-fed lakes, alpine meadows, and peaks towering over 13,000 feet, which, looking out the truck window, was hard to believe existed in this area. But sure enough, the mountains appeared on the horizon, and we were entering the gateway of the Snowy Range in the historic mining town of Centennial, named in honor of the 100th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence. We stopped at the visitor center, picked up a map outlining the byway's points of interest, and started to follow it. We briefly stopped at Libby Creek before taking a gravel open range road to a chapel near Brooklyn Lake. You got pine needles all over your back. Do you realize that? Pine needles all over you. <laughs> Back on the main byway, we were treated to a full reveal of the Snowy Range Mountains before turning off at the Sugarloaf Recreation Area. There was a definite shift in the landscape. The gravel road ended at two picturesque snowmelt lakes at the base of Sugarloaf Mountain. We were both completely blown away by the scenery. This was not at all what we expected to see on this trip. We took some time to explore the Medicine Bow Trail around Lewis Lake before moving on. After pulling ourselves away from Lewis Lake, we drove to the highest point on the byway. The Libby Flats Observation Site sits at over 10,800 feet above sea level. This very windy overlook provides spectacular views in all directions.
The Snowy Range is unique among the Rocky Mountains in the fact that they are actually made out of quartzite, not granite. Over the course of billions of years, heat and pressure changed existing sandstone from an ancient sea into quartzite. An erosion slowly molded the Snowy Range into what we see today. The road continued to offer breathtaking views, and we continued to soak it all in. A somewhat unexpected point of interest was the Ryan Park POW camp. The camp was built to house German prisoners during World War II and is now on the National Register of Historic Places. A map was provided with an overview of the camp and corresponded with wooden stakes marking what building was where. We ended up completing the byway sooner than anticipated. So we parked in a peaceful aspen grove next to a creek and discussed what to do next over lunch. We weren't quite ready to go home, so we decided to continue west to the town of Saratoga, where Dave had read about a natural mineral spring free to the public. When we dipped our toes in, we were shocked at how incredibly hot the water was. Oh, wow. Like, really hot. Yeah, it is. Really well. Since it was already a hot summer day, we decided not to get in and just walk around the river instead. Driving back over the byway, we made one final stop at Lake Murray, a site we had to pass by earlier due to the lack of parking. Its high popularity was immediately justified the second we laid eyes on it. Lake Murray is glacier-fed and sits at the base of the majestic Medicine Bow Peak. As if that wasn't a perfect ending to our day, we had a bald eagle sighting. and saw herds of wild antelope sharing the prairie with grazing horses. We drove 30 minutes back east to the town of Laramie, where we decided to spend the rest of the weekend. The Laramie KOA was a simple manicured campground with tent sites and cabins set aside in a grassy field. As you can see, we arrived to our campsite right as a thunderstorm swept in. So we relaxed inside the camper and settled in for the night.
With clearer weather the next morning, we set out to explore the town. Right around the corner from the campground is the Wyoming Territorial Prison. It was built in 1872, long before Wyoming was even a state. It's also the only prison to ever hold the notorious outlaw, Butch Cassidy. We unfortunately arrived too late to take a tour, but you can catch a glimpse of the historic building off in the distance. We then ventured downtown. Laramie was actually created by the Union Pacific Railroad. It was chosen to be the first location of a major repair depot, with plans to build machine shops, a large roundhouse, and a power plant. Railroad surveyors laid out the streets and lot lines of the new town, and settlers moved to the area shortly after. Dave had read about this footbridge that was built for the Union Pacific workers as a safer way to cross the train tracks. So we decided to check it out. It was pretty exhilarating standing directly above the trains flying in every few minutes. However, not exactly the ideal thing to do if you are afraid of heights. In a suburb on the outskirts of town is the Spring Creek Disc Golf Course. It's located in a quiet park with very few obstacles other than a few trees and a small lake, which Dave had a close call with. Oh! Yes, you almost lost your disc! Oh my god, that was such a lucky throw. Look at that, it hit the sign. It hit that sign? Yeah. I thought it was way further out. No, it Seriously. hit the sign. That was li literally in front of the lake. And it bounced all the way back to here. <laughs> yeah. And should I try to go over the lake to get to the No. <laughs> then, out of nowhere, a huge thunderstorm with lightning suddenly rolled in. took this as a sign to get back to the campground and rest up for our early drive back home. Next time on The Way We Did It. We take the Lance to Fairplay, Colorado for our annual leaf peeping scenic drive. If you'd like to join us on more adventures, be sure to like this video and click that subscribe button. And consider supporting our channel by becoming a member so we can continue to show you the way we did it.